Welcome to Endoscopy on Air 2020. Watch Muen Kajab presenting a case of endoscopic gastroenterostomy and also talking about tips and tricks of this difficult procedure. So this is a, a uh, procedure that was done live during image course at Repici's uh, hospital uh, of a EUS guided gastrojejunostomy on a patient with uh, unresectable malignant pancreatic cancer with gastric outlet obstruction. So here we have a gastroscope uh, proximal to the site of obstruction. We're using 60C syringes to inject dye through the gastroscope to opacify the small bowel. We give a small bowel paralytic here, glucagon, that works very well. We want to distend the small bowel and not insufflate any air. The contrast will push the air out and will distend the small bowel. Now you see here we're injecting a mix of methylene blue and contrast. We inject between 400 and 500 cc's. Sometimes we also add some saline. We prefer saline on water to avoid hyponatremia. This is a 19 gauge needle, a finder needle to access a dilated loop of bowel close to the stomach. And here we aspirate blue dye, as you see on the left side. This allows us to know this is a jejunum and, and avoid inadvertent gastrocolostomy. We remove the needle and advance the hot axis. We can either use a 15 millimeter or a 20 millimeter stent we see the small bowel loop is adjacent to the stomach and it's pretty distended. And here the stent is placed under EUS guidance. The stent should be perpendicular to the small bowel loop and using the cautery, we can easily access it. We deploy the first flange under EUS guidance within the loop, we pull a little bit to oppose the loop to the stomach followed by deployment of the second flange within the scope. Now the last step is advancement of the flange or pushing the flange out of the scope. So here, we, this is the, first, the only time we switch to the end of view and using the end of view, we push the stent out of the scope very slowly. We have to pull the scope a little away from the stomach wall to allow the flange to uh, open. Immediately, we'll see blue dye, and that signifies um, correct stent deployment within the jejunum. Sometimes we use a 15 millimeter stent. Sometimes we use a 20 millimeter stent, depending how distended the small bowel loop. Here is a fluoroscopy image uh, demonstrating excellent placement of the lumen opposing metal stent. Thomas? Well, Muin, this, uh, this looked too easy. So where, where, where are the difficulties? What, uh, what if the small bowel misbehaves? Yeah, so the, uh, this is a good question and uh, the most commonly asked question really because the small bowel as Thomas is intending is a mobile organ. Uh, so of course we give a paralytic agent which is very important. We, we uh, choose a small bowel loop that's adjacent to the stomach. In a patient without a surgical anatomy, that's always the case. You're always going to see a distal duodenum or proximal jejunum uh, close to the stomach. So two important things to avoid the small, small bowel loop moving away from you. First, this is not an FNA. So you can't jab this with the stent quickly and forcefully uh, while accessing the jejunum. You're going to push the jejunum away. So it's a slow push of the stand into the jejunum and allow the cautery to access the jejunum without pushing it away. So slow push. The second uh, trick is not to use a guide wire. Typically, uh, people will think if we use a guide wire, they, it feels safer. It actually is not. Because initially when we started doing this procedure, we've noted that this, the wire pushes the jejunum away. And that's, this is why we use the freehand technique without a wire that allows easy access to the jejunum without pushing it away. Okay, and what happens if you penetrate the stomach but can't enter the small bowel? You, you pull back and clip or what, uh, what do you do? 
Yeah, so that happens if the jejunum pushes away from you. You know, jejunum has very thin wall, so the cautery easily access it. But if for some reason it pushes out, what we do, and, and then you have the one flange in the stomach and one flange in the peritoneum, first, no need to panic. The patient has, is under sedation and we've given antibiotics. So what we do, what I do is I place a clip close to the axial stent because you know once you remove the axis, it actually it can be hard to find this little hole. The stomach wall, the muscularis propria is thick. It closes very quickly. So I mark the area with the clip, remove the axis, place an ovesco, and then reattempt it. Or if you're not comfortable, you can just put a duodenal stent. So this, this is inconsequential. You know, there's no uh, peritonitis doesn't happen because again, the muscle wall is thick and it closes uh, very fast. The problem is if you access the small bowel, if you put a hole in the small bowel, that's that's a, a difficult perforation to close. But that's that that happens rarely. Most uh, common uh, most common scenario for misplacement is the first scenario we discussed. Okay, Moen, um, I, I I like your your short and precise presentation and also your the many tricks you uh, gave to our big audience so thank you very very much thank you uh, pl a pleasure to participate and congrats thomas ali and the team